Hi guys, it's Michelle and today's video is going to be yet another reincarnation stories video for you guys. I love reincarnation stories. I think they're so interesting, although the concept of reincarnation kind of freaks me out. I still think that it's really interesting to talk about. The first story that we're going to be talking about is about a young boy named Jamie from Wisconsin. So Jamie was absolutely terrified of water growing up. He hated going swimming and whenever his mom tried to make him go in the deep end of the pool, he immediately started screaming and crying and was just always terrified of water. Jamie's older sister Teal is a psychologist and she talked about in the documentary how she found it strange that Jamie had a fear of water because the fear of water and swimming is a fear that is more inherited, I guess, from the people around you. Kind of like picky eaters. I think if your child is a picky eater, it is the fault of the parent somehow. Every picky eater I know has picky parents, but I don't know. I'm not a doctor. But apparently, if your parents don't display any fear of swimming, the child technically shouldn't have anything to be afraid of and because they don't, like why would they just assume that that's scary? I don't know. And Jamie's whole family loved swimming. They had a pool. It was just, you know, a typical thing in their household to go swimming, but not for Jamie because he was terrified of it. When Jamie was three or four years old, his sister was teaching him how to ride a bike. And as he was talking to his sister, he was saying that he remembered watching his mom ride a little blue bike down the same street when she was little. Sister was kind of confused. She was like, did you see a video of like a home video of mom, like riding this bike, like or a picture? She just didn't get what he was talking about. And he said, no, I looked down and saw her in the window from heaven. Um, and his mom actually did have a little blue bike when she was a kid, but again, they kind of chalked it up to imagination because I don't know. That's probably what I would do is just live in denial of how freaky that is that this kid's talking about being in heaven and watching his mother as a child. It's like nuts. And Jamie was a child. He actually had sort of a British accent. Like he spoke in an accent with certain things. And at first his parents thought it was like a speech impediment because he was constantly talking in just like a little bit of a British accent twang. Then they noticed something really strange, which was that he actually used terminology for things that like a little kid wouldn't know that were very British, I guess, but also had to do with ships. I had to like Google this because I was like, what does that even mean? But Jamie, I, instead of saying left and right, he only said port or starboard, which is left or right for boaters? Question. It's a boat thing. I don't know. Literally only said that. I'm like, where the hell did you even learn that from? Because I had never heard it until this fucking video. So I thought that was crazy. Parents did too. They had no idea where he could have learned this from. And this is when even his psychologist sister who would not dismiss, you know, the idea of a past life or anything weird going on, but she would, you know, try to obviously rationalize it using psychology because I think certain parts of it can be rationalized as psychology, but then it got to the point where she couldn't rationalize it anymore. When Jamie was around four to five years old. He began having very serious night terrors. He would wake up in the middle of the night and just be screaming. And then he would just get up from his bed and run. Like he was sleepwalking, but like sleep running. And his mom could only explain that it felt like he was trying to like escape like it, it just felt like he was running away from something and looking for a way out. Jamie's doctor said this was relatively normal for kids to have nightmares, but it got to the point where it was super distressing and terrifying for the entire family. During the night terrors, Jamie would talk often about drowning or water, but no answers really came from any of this yet. When Jamie was four years old. His parents went out and left him alone with a babysitter. And I guess the babysitter let him watch the end of the movie Titanic and he became obsessed with the Titanic in a way that like really freaked his parents out. Jamie began constantly drawing the Titanic, like all of the time, everywhere. They would go out to dinner, you know, you get your little crayons, he'd be drawing the Titanic 
every single time and in extreme detail. The way that he talked about the Titanic, it was almost as though he knew the ship by heart. Anytime Jamie would talk to his mom about the sinking of the Titanic, he would get incredibly emotional and just really point out that it was not supposed to happen. They just, he kept saying it wasn't supposed to happen, it shouldn't have happened, and the men in the boiler room couldn't get out. He also kept claiming that the ship was built wrong and it was everything was a mistake and that it was built too fast and they cut corners and just was very, very distraught over a boat that he had no part of. It was fucking sank before he was born. Why is he so distressed about it? It got to the point where it really freaked his parents out. His mother actually started to believe at this point that perhaps he was remembering a past life of someone who built or was on the Titanic because the way that he was so emotional about it was just completely as if he were there. But again, his sister still was not like 100% on board with the reincarnation theory. That was until Jamie got a little computer game about the Titanic. See, since he had an obsession with the Titanic, his parents got him a little computer game where it's not a bird's eye view of the Titanic. It's like as if you're actually on the boat and you have to like, you know, run around, find the different things that, you know, the game is telling you to find. The point of it is that you don't know where you are That is what makes the game hard. Like you have to find the captain's quarters or, you know, X, Y, Z. Jamie's sister watched her little brother absolutely walk through the Titanic on this video game like he knew the place. He, like he built the place. He knew exactly where everything was. He would go directly to it, never making a wrong turn. And this was the point. Jamie's sister was like, I cannot keep acting like that this isn't something deeper than Jamie's imagination. That's when she really started to believe that there was a past life situation. His mom ended up wanting to do some research to try to figure out exactly who Jamie could have been in the past life. She found that the architect of the ship was named Thomas Andrews. He was the chief designer of the Titanic and he was actually fighting with JP Morgan saying that there was not enough lifeboats that they needed to slow down the construction because they were rushing it and he was like, this is not a good idea. We need to use steel instead of iron. But JP Morgan just was pushing to have the ship done at a certain point. These issues that Thomas Andrews like tried to avoid ended up being the reason that the Titanic sank the way that it did. Had they listened to Thomas Andrews, I don't know if it would have happened at all. Jamie's mom started to believe that maybe her son was Thomas Andrews in a past life. So the Titanic exhibition ended up coming to Jamie's town and his parents decided to take him there. Jamie was completely enamored by all of the artifacts. He was studying each one and he thought it was so interesting and looking at every single thing in extreme detail. He thought it was so cool. His mom was hoping that by taking him here, this would kind of be a closing chapter. That didn't really happen until a few nights later. A few nights after Jamie and his family went to the Titanic exhibition, Jamie had a dream that his family refers to later as the death dream. Jamie's mom was watching TV while Jamie was asleep in his room. All of a sudden she heard a banging on Jamie's bedroom wall. So she obviously jumped up and ran down the hall to make sure Jamie was okay. And Jamie was just on all fours on his bed, shaking so hard. He like looked like he was convulsing and he was drenched in sweat and he just screamed so loud, she's going down. The sound of his voice, according to his mother, was so terrifying that it didn't sound like Jamie. It didn't even sound like a kid at all. It sounded like a grown man. I can't even imagine how scary that would be. But after that night, Jamie stopped talking about the Titanic, like less and less. He moved on with his own life and stopped having night terrors and stopped thinking about this boat. I think that this is such an interesting concept because they believe that Jamie needed to have the dream of, you know, his death in a past life. Thomas Andrews actually went down with the ship. Like he refused to get on the lifeboat and let other people have it because he had constructed the ship himself. It's just really interesting. And Jamie and his whole family genuinely believe that he was Thomas Andrews in a past life. And I believe it too. I just, that's crazy. I mean, how else do you explain it? What do you guys think? All right, the next story is about Lexi, a little girl from Mount Pleasant, Tennessee. Lexi's mother had a very difficult labor and delivery, but nonetheless, she ended up being a healthy baby. Her family always felt like Lexi was 
different. Like she would hold her crayons and pencils like an adult versus like a child who holds things like with a fist, which is definitely interesting because I feel like every kid I've ever seen like holds a pencil like this. I don't know why. Similar to most of these reincarnation stories, Lexi's sleep habits were incredibly strange and she began having terrible, terrible, extreme nightmares where she would wake up screaming, help me, I'm scared. These night terrors continued for a very long time and her family became very concerned. One time Lexi's mom was putting her into the car and Lexi was like talking to someone and her mom goes, who are you talking to? And she said, the little boy right there. Even scarier. I guess Lexi began looking out of windows every day, like every day. And she would constantly say, oh no, they're coming. She would just constantly say this, like to the point her parents would just be like, no one's there, Lexi. Like no one's coming here. You're fine. But she kept saying, and she kept every single day, like clockwork, looking out the window saying, oh no, they're coming. Until one day she looked out the window and said, oh no, they're coming here could you imagine if your child every day is like looking out the window and says oh no they're coming like someone's coming like blah blah, blah. and then all of a sudden they switch it up and say oh no they're here that's my worst nightmare like that's so scary so her parents of course jumped up and they looked around and no one was there and they were like lexi no one's here it's gonna be fine and she looked at her aunt and said yes they are and they want to hurt you I hate that. Another day, Lexi was talking to a tree and her mom asked, who are you talking to? And she pointed up at the tree and said, you don't see those two people there. Her grandma asked her what they looked like. And Lexi said, they're a mommy and a daddy and they're on fire. That's so scary. Lexi's grandma actually started to remember that Lexi's uncle kind of had a similar thing when he was a kid. He would talk to things that weren't there he would just have weird memories of stuff that never happened. And she started to wonder if this could be a past life. Lexi's uncle Garrett, apparently when he was a kid, he was sleeping one night and he sat up in his sleep and said, oh, look, he's here. And Lexi's grandma was like, who's here? And he said, God. And Lexi's grandma said, how do you know what God looks like? And Lexi's uncle said, I lived with him before I was your little boy. That's so scary. <laughs> I mean, I think a lot of people would find, you know, peace and happiness in that, but that freaks me out. One day, Lexi was outside, a plane flew over her head. She started screaming and panicking and saying that it was going to fall, it's going to fall. When her grandma was like, the plane's not gonna fall, it's fine. Lexi started screaming again, saying, it's going to fall, it's going to catch on fire and fall from the sky. Lexi's grandma asked her, Lexi, have you ever been on a plane? Because in this lifetime, she hadn't. But Lexi responded and said, yes. And she said that there was lots of thunder and lightning and the plane caught on fire and crashed. And that is how she died in this past life. Lexi's grandma came across a page in Lexi's coloring book and saw that Lexi had written the numbers 866. So she decided to do some research to see if there was any plane crashes that happened in August of 1966. She ended up finding one that actually caught on fire and fell out of the sky. And it was like a passenger plane people died and the grandma found the names of two sisters nancy and susan chamberlain who died on the plane and she believes that that could have been lexi and her sister in a past life i think we're at the point where i'm creeped out at this point because i just filmed two of these in a row and i just uh I'm scared. I don't know why reincarnation scares me as much as it does, because I know it brings people a lot of peace and a lot of happiness, but for me? Anyway, that is it for today's video. If you guys liked it, please give it a big thumbs up. Let me know in the comments what you guys think about these reincarnation stories. I would love to hear your thoughts on them, but that is it. Make sure you follow me on Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram, and subscribe for new videos every week, and I will see you guys later. Bye.